you're going to be covering Tottenham, aren't you, this, this season, even the, even this summer? Can he make Tottenham great again? Well, I think he's. I think he's a better. F- I think he's a good fit. Um, I think the profile wise, I think he's a, a manager, and maybe not so much with Mourinho, but but certainly with Conte, kind of felt like he was doing Spurs a favour yeah, being yeah. the manager. He didn't really um, hide it very well. Yeah, and whereas with I think Postecoglou feels like someone who wants to be at that club. He's an ambitious manager. He wants to prove himself. Exactly. In the Premier League yeah, as well, I think he's he, got yeah. a point to prove, and I think the Conte kind of felt like you know I'm doing you a favour being here. <laughs> whereas I feel Postecoglou will really you know relish that opportunity. Uh, I think he's a very good talker. He plays attractive football. He's a big personality, and I think he's a good fit to go for for Spurs. I think he's going to have a difficult job to get them in in the Champions League. Um, particularly when you don't know what's going to happen with Harry Kane, um, but I think for for Spurs, I think in the in the market that they were looking in and, and you know the names they were trying to get, I think they could have done worse than someone like Postecoglou mm. personally. But expectations won't be for him to hit the ground running in terms of challenging for the title next season, will they? No, I think I think most Spurs fans would at the very least just want to see some good football again. That's yeah. that's a starting point because they haven't really seen it for a couple of, you know for a while, mm. <laughs> really on a consistent basis. Yeah. You know, there was. A, Maybe the second half of the season before last, you know, when they when they ended up finishing yeah. top four uh, under Conte. But but apart from that spell, there hasn't really been much to get excited about at, at Tottenham since since the Champions League run, you know, in, in 2019. Um, so they want to see that, and then they want to see Spurs at least having a go. And I think you know one of the c- criticisms of Mourinho and Conte particularly was that they were prepared to sort of bin off the. Sp- smaller tournaments you know they had real chances in the FA Cup and the League you know, Carabao Cup League Cup as I still call it uh, to have a go at that you know yeah. and then they played weakened teams and were knocked out accordingly and you think why didn't they just go for that you know because every uh, listen everyone's criticism of Tottenham and the whole thing that reflects on Kane they haven't won a trophy for mm. I think I counted up the other day Postacoglu including sort of caretaker stints will be the 10th man since they look, they won a trophy 10th wow. manager you know, since one day Ramos. <laughs> maybe that's uh, one of the reasons it's been so long since they won a trophy. Maybe it is. But, you know, so so to challenge would be mm. would be interesting, would be something they'd want. But I think more than anything, to get that club playing the sort of football. And I think, you know, Pochettino, the, the, the comparisons with Pochettino are quite good as well. He seems a similar character. And he, he's got a, that sort of regrouping, rebuilding, reset mm. to do mm. that, that Pochettino did quite well after, you know, AVB and then... Tim Sherwood, for God's sake, and all the money from Bale was sort of wasted mostly, mm. wasn't it? So they, you know, Pochettino came in and, and turned it around. It took a year, but then he he got out some some of the dead wood, got in some young, hungry players, and I think that's what he's going to have to do at Chelsea, isn't it? You were, you were talking earlier, Jerry, about the disconnect, and um, you know, you said that Arteta and you know Unai Emery, there was a big disconnect, yeah, wow, big what disconnect, a job. What a and that job. was one of the things that Arteta had to overcome. Yeah. He won the FA Cup within six months of. Of taking over, which bought him a bit of time, but he also mm. was granted the backing of the of the not too popular Arsenal owners at, at the time, and even now the Cronkies to say, "Well, we'll let you change the culture of a club, reconnect with the fans, get yeah. the players and the fans back together, get rid of the people that people don't like, and get on as sort of spoiling the atmosphere here." Does he does Potter Coglu got to contend with that at Tottenham, or is it doesn't seem quite? It's so not bad. as toxic as it got at Arsenal, I don't think. Um, so I don't think it's that that's the big problem. I think he's already got you know he's he's got some goodwill in the bank just because of the way he plays football and he's known for. And I think my personal you know taking a taking a bit of a punt on it still with a season a month away, and you'll be there in Perth or his first yeah. first big game, so on home soil for him. Yeah. Um, I think once once the fans see Tottenham playing on the front foot. And you know, there's with with everyone fit, and if Kane stays, they're a decent team. You know, a decent team. Um, then that, I think that that will buy him a lot of goodwill, and I think then then he can go into the season with a bit of optimism. You know, and I think there'll be a feel good factor sooner rather than later, as long as they don't have a terrible terrible start. You know, which uh, you can't legislate against that, can you? Mm. 